Hey guys, Joe up here, and welcome to the first video in our series of making a 2D game engine in Java. Now, this engine is not going to be um, super amazing, if you will. It's not going to be made in OpenGL. It's going to be a software renderer, which is a renderer that renders using the CPU and not using the GPU. But the reason is, is because it's a lot, you can program it very quickly. It uses standard Java libraries. It's great for making uh, short, quick games for like uh, game programming competitions and stuff like that. And I just enjoy programming in these kind of game engines just because it's so basic and it's so easy to get, understand and you can build a game real quick with it. So we're going to start. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our project. So I'm going to make a new project, Java project. And we're going to call this uh, 2D... Uh, we need a, we should have an engine name, right? We'll call it Maj Engine. <laughs> that works for me. All right, yep. And we're going to be using Eclipse. If that wasn't obvious, we're going to be using Eclipse for the series. Hopefully you're aware of Eclipse. If not, just follow along and you'll be, uh, be nice and good. I have a, a video in my intermediate Java series. The very first video shows you how to get uh, Eclipse if you don't already have Eclipse. So... We got our engine, we're going to open up our source, let's make a new package, and we'll say uh, the standard is com, period, then a unique name, I'm going to go with my name, Majub, and then I'm going to call this engine, because this is going to be our engine folder. And then inside that, I'm going to go new, and I'm going to make a new class, and this is going to be called a game container, because this will contain our game. Right? So the way this engine is going to be designed, it's going to be designed separate from the game. So this engine can be used multiple times. It's going to be self-independent and not meshed in with the game, if that makes sense. Okay? So, we got a game engine. I'm going to make the skeleton of my game container class. We're going to make a constructor. Right? And we're just going to make a public void start. Uh, public void stop. We're going to have a public void run. And lastly, uh, let's get rid of these folders down here so we get some more screen space. There we go. And a private void dispose. Boom. So we made a skeleton here. So we have our methods. Now, this is going to be our game loop. And what is a game loop? A game loop is basically a while loop. It keeps on looping because you know if the program runs out of code to execute the program's just going to end well it's a game we don't want it to end until the game's over so we're just going to keep executing our uh, loop okay and a basic game engine the game engine just starts up a game loop and it loads in all the resources and controls user input that's that's the basic game engine so we have our middle so we have a public void run which for those of you who are aware of java we're actually going to be implementing, we're going to implement runnable, because I want this to be a thread. Great. So, we got that basics. Let's start filling in these methods. I'm going to make uh, a private thread, thread, and we're going to have a, make a private um, boolean. Uh, running, I'm going to set equal to false. I'm also going to make a private uh, final, uh, let's call it an update cap, update underscore cap. Remember, finals, all capitals, because that's just a standard. Yeah, we need to give it a variable type. It's a double, call it a double. And we're going to set equal to 1.0 divided by 60.0. So that's going to, we're going to cap our updates to having 60 a second. There's no reason to update faster than 60 times a second. So we're just going to cap our updates. We also use it to cap the rendering because it's a software renderer and there's no reason to render faster than 60 frames per second. But you'll, you'll see that when we get there. All right, so we got uh, the basics here for, to get our thread going, right? So I'm going to go down here to our start because I want our start to start it and what it's going to do is it's going to say uh, run uh, we're not going to set our running here we're going to say thread equals new thread and inside our parentheses we need to put our thread and it's going to be this 
because this is our runnable. So we're going to put our thread here, and then I'm going to say thread.run. There's a difference between .run and .start. .start is if you want it to be a side thread. .run is if you want it to be the main thread. And we want this to be our main thread, so we're going to do .run. All right, and that's going to call our run method down here. All right, and we're going to loop while running is equal to true, but we don't need to put while equal to true, we can just put while running. Now we need to actually set running to true, so I'm gonna put that in our run. I'm gonna say running equals true, boom. Now I need to have some way of timing our loop. Right, we got our update cap. We only want to update once every 60 seconds. So we need to keep track. We need to time our loop. So how can we do that? Well, I'm going to make a double. I'm going to call it first time equals zero. Double la uh, last time is equal to zero. We're actually going to change that. I'm just going to write down the variable names. We'll have a double past time is equal to zero. And we'll have a double unprocessed time equal to zero. Alrighty. Now this, these variable names might be a little similar because they're similar to uh, another YouTuber named Binnybox who has a really good uh, 3D engine code. And I love his for loop. I mean his uh, game loop. So I'm going to implement that myself here. So we got a first, last, uh, past time and unprocessed time. So actually last time, we're actually going to initialize it. Now I want this clock to keep track of time and I want it to do it very accurately, somewhat. So we're gonna do system.nanotime. So we're gonna get the current nano time of our system. All right, that's very accurate time, but that's very accurate. It's way too accurate. So I'm going to actually divide it by one and then we're gonna have nine zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and then point zero. All right, now you can, you can write this in a fancy way, like I think it's like 10 e to the, you can write it like an exponent, but uh, that's not cool as writing nine zeros, I feel. So now we're actually start the loop. So while we're running, we're gonna set our first time, right? It's equal to our system dot nano time divided by, you guessed it again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we're going to say past time is equal to first time minus last time, All right? And our last time will be equal to our first time. All right, so what this is going to do is it'll get what time it is currently, and then it'll see how long it's been since first time minus last time. So how long has it been since this line of code executed, All right? And then it'll store the time and then loops again, and it'll keep doing that. So what I'm going to do now is I take our unprocessed time and I'm going to add it to our, we're going to take our past time and add it on to our unprocessed time, just like that. Okay. Now we're going to come in here and we're going to say while our unprocessed time is greater than or equal to update cap. Ugh, I can do the underscore update cap. We are going to subtract our update cap. Now what this here will do, so say like our, our, our thread freezes for some reason. We have like code that causes our frame rate to drop to like two or something, right? We still want to update all those missed updates, right? So if this freezes for like twice the update cap, I want it to update twice because we missed those updates and we want to go back and update what we missed. So we're going to make sure we update. So here I'm going to leave a comment, like a to-do uh, update game, right? Because we don't actually have a game to update yet. So we're just going to say update game. Now I'm going to use this to lock in my frame rate right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here to our doubles. I'm going to say boolean uh, render equals false. Now, when we update our game, something changes. So I want to say render equals true. Only render when we update. Because there's no point of rendering the same screen if we haven't updated. Then we're going to go down below our while loop and we're going to say if 
render. Then we're going to to do render game. And then I'm going to put an else here. And I'm going to say thread.sleep. One millisecond. And we're just going to put our thread to sleep for a millisecond. This will free up process the processor. We also need to surround it by a try catch. That's what I just did there, if you didn't realize that. If you hover over it, it'll auto-generate it. So, and I want it to sleep. If we don't do anything, like we didn't update, right? We didn't render, uh, just sleep. There's nothing to do, right? And that'll help with the processor. It'll make the game use less CPU percentage, like the CPU percentage usage. You know, like when you look in the task manager, it'll be a lot lower just because we have this sleep here. All right, and then at the very end, I want to dispose, which ain't that important since we're using uh, a software renderer, but I'm still going to do it just because it's still good practice to do it. So we're going to dispose, and then we'll put our dispose code here, right? So there we have our very beginning to our for loop. Now let's just test if this works. I'm going to throw a uh, public static void main string args down here just to give this a test so i'm going to say new game uh actually i need to make this have a name so i'm going to say game container gc equals new game container at gc dot start right so that's how we're going to start our game container now i actually want it to tell us something so i'm just going to say like system dot out dot print line render i mean not render update all right, so if I run this, it spams update. It's not that useful, right? Not useful yet. Let's actually make it say our frame rate, actually. Since we got a little more time, let's, let's, let's add the frame rate. So up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say double frame time equals zero. And then I need, technically only need one, but because of how uh, we're going to change this up a little bit, I'm going to actually put it in now. I'm going to have two integer. I'm going to have frames is equal to zero. And I'm going to have int FPS equal to zero. So the frames will actually count how many frames have passed, but FPS will be how many frames per second. Okay. So we're going to take our frames and down here with our unprocessed time, I'm going to say frame time plus equals past time. Just like that. So we want to know how much time has passed. We're keeping track of the time. And now here in our update is where I'm going to say if our frame time is greater than or equal to 1. Now by dividing by, uh, I think that's 1 billion? Is it 1 million? 1 billion. I think it's 1 billion. We, we divide our nanoseconds by a billion. It makes it into milliseconds. So if frame time is more than 1... That'll make it one second. That's the whole point of dividing by that. So we just kind of translate our nano time over a bit. And then our frame time, if it's greater than a second, I'm going to say frame time is equal to zero. Right? And then I want frames uh, to equal zero. And I want FPS to equal frames. Oh, wait, we got to swap those around. Otherwise, FPS will just be zero. Frames is equal to zero. Right? And now down here in our render, I need to say frames plus plus to count our frames, right? And then we need it to print out FPS. Now FPS will be printed out in the render. That's why I have uh, two variables here. Otherwise, you'd just be printing out a number that counts from 0 to 60 every frame. That'd be weird. So what we're going to do instead is up here, I'm also gonna, just going to say system that out, that print line. Uh, FPS. Uh, actually, we'll make it FPS plus FPS, right? And now I hit run, run, and oh my, <laughs> that's a lot of frames. So our render, render true. Oh, <laughs> I uh, messed up a little bit here. So at the beginning of our running loop, we need to say render equals false. So if we don't have that, that's how many that's how many times our loop is executing right now. That's a lot, and that's way too much to be executing. We want it to be executing 60 times a second, not however much that was. 
And sometimes it'll go to 61. It's fine. It's just because uh, it, it, it counts an extra frame sometimes. It's not the most accurate way of keeping track of the frames, but it works. So that's going to do it for this episode. We got our initial game loop going. We don't actually have our game yet in here, but that'll be the next episode where we add in... Uh, we're not going to actually add in the game yet. We're going to add in the window next. So we actually have something on the screen. Because what's the point of having an engine if you don't have a window? So see you guys next time.